three-phase induction motor control setup, where we are going to control the three-phase AC induction motor with the DSP two eight double three. That is a TMS three twenty F two eight three three five. Okay. Now, first of all, we will explain what are the components of this motor control setup and what is the importance of each and every case. Okay. Now, very first, we will start with this DSP two eight double three five, where a CPU is a TMS three twenty C. 28335 and here this DSP kit is used for the most of the power control devices whereas uh, DC to AC solution as well as the renewable energy in uh, whereas uh, again in a motor, motor control as well as uh, automobile sectors okay and this um, peripherals of this kits are here we are going to connect the JTEC emulator peripherals of this kit are PWM, ADC, VAC capture as well as the encoder. Here the UART is also there. CAN peripheral is also there. HPI control signs are also there. Okay. So these peripherals of these kits are organized in such a way that the kit is used for the various applications in a power electron scheme. Okay. And the second thing is a PWM isolator where this isolator is basically a four isolators and whenever we are going with these power electronics devices we have to control the transistors or the IGBT devices. Okay. Where we need to have a 15 volt PWM. Okay. The 5 volt PWM are converted back with the 15 volt PWM and it is fed to this inverter. This inverter is basically a so combination of rectifier plus inverter. Okay. Where we are giving a 3 phase supply, it is a 415 volt 3 phase AC supply. By default, it is rectifier is inbuilt and uh, it will convert the AC to DC and through the DSP kit we will give the PWM in such a way that we are converting DC to the AC again. Okay. Now, this output of this inverter we are giving to the motor. This is a three phase AC motor, 450 volt, maximum RP, RPM is 1500 RPM. Okay. And this motor is coupled with the DC generator. Okay. So basically what we are doing, we have coupled this DC generator, this AC motor to the mechanical Okay. So, we are connecting this DC motor to give the loading effect to the AC motor. Okay. Through this DC motor, we are supplying the field voltage and we are generating armature current and as well as the voltage. Okay. So whatever the current and voltage is generated by the DC generator, we are measuring with this load panel. Here the load panel is basically to give the load to the DC generator. Okay. So whatever the load given by this load panel will be transferred to the AC motor via DC generator. Okay. Now again in this setup, we need to measure the voltage as well as the current generated from the inverter. Okay. So whatever the voltage and current generated from the inverter, we are giving to this sensor interface kit, where it is a combination of voltage as well as the current sensors. Okay. Now let us see what is inside this panel. Okay. In this panel, we are giving the three voltage sensor as well as the three current sensors. Okay. So whatever the voltage and current is generated from the inverter okay so it is fed from the inverter to this panel okay so this cable is basically we are giving the voltage input and from this cables we are giving the current input okay so whatever the high voltage and the high current given to the this panel we can take the input it's a low level input so it's basically a 3 volt output and this output we can give to the 3 okay so whatever the voltage and current generated from the inverter we can fight to the DSP via the sensor interface kit. So basically sensor interface kit is nothing but the voltage converter which converts the high voltage as well as the current to the low voltage so that we can give the input to the DSP kits. One more thing, we have coupled this AC motor with the DC generator okay, and we can give the load to this load panel. But we are also measuring the speed of this induction motor. Okay. So how we can do it? So we have interfaced this 5 volt encoder to this induction motor okay, so that we are giving these 5 volt encoder pulses to the DSP part. Okay, so we are giving encoder pulses to the sensor panel and to the sensor panel we are giving the pulses to the DSP gate so that we can measure the speed using the encoder also. Fine. Now in this motor control setup we are going to control the speed of the motor as well as the voltage and the current. Okay. So we are controlling basically voltage as well as the current and we are going to measure the motor speed also. Okay. So we are going to demonstrate this.
rebuyer software, software. So basically, using a rebuyer technique, we are going to control the speed of the motor. Okay. So in this demonstration, we are going with the open loop control of the induction motor. Okay. And that is again with the DSP two Okay. So in this motor control setup, so we will control the rebuyer ratio, and we will do it by this DSP. Okay. So how we are going to control the rebuyer technique? Okay. Let us demonstrate with the software. Okay. So now in this in my program. I'm going to run this program for the open loop and let us execute the program and here at this screen we can give the switching frequency from the 1 kilohertz to 10, 20 kilohertz as well as we can apply a dependent of uh, as per the desired uh, values. Okay. So here I am going to give the switching frequency as well as the dependent as per my requirement. Okay. So now I am giving the switching frequency so this open loop that is a 10 kilohertz and dead band that is a 4 microseconds. Okay. And let us run the program now. Okay. So once I click on execute, the motor will start rotating and it is depend on the ADC voltage of this potentiometer. Okay. So whenever I am rotating the potentiometer, it means it will give it will change the V by F ratio. Okay. Now let us see. How does it happen? Okay. So, see, the motor has been started. Okay. Now, we can see that how much voltage and current is coming. Okay. Here, we can see that the first waveform, let's say channel 1, that is yellow color, is a voltage waveform, and the second one, that is a pure sine wave, it's a current wave. We have started the program. Okay. Now, what we can see that we can take the voltage, high voltage as well as the high current to the sensor board and we can give the feedback, high voltage and current to the DSP kit also. Okay. So, we are going to measure the voltage as well as the current waveform. See, here the yellow color is basically a voltage waveform. This blue color, there is a pure sine wave, it's basically a current wave. So whenever we are make, making a potentiometer value as a zero, so our V by F frequency will be a one hertz. When and when the potentiometer value is a maximum, our output frequency will be a fifty hertz. Okay. So whenever the potentiometer value is maximum, okay, then the frequency will be fifty hertz and motor will rotate in the maximum RPM, that is a fifteen hundred RPM. Okay. So and whenever we are changing the value for the potentiometer, we can increase or decrease the speed of this motor. Now, we will demonstrate the V by R technique using a feedback control of this induction motor. Okay. So, basically what we will do, we will take the voltage as well as the current generated from the inverter with the DSP kit as well as we will measure the motor speed with the DSP and we will control the speed as per our desired speed. Okay. So, we will set our desired speed and our software will take care of the uh, speed control of this motor. Okay, so we will start the program. Now, let us start. Let us apply the switching frequency as well as the defend. And let us start. Okay, so once I start, it will display the desired speed also and our software will take care of the speed control of this induction motor. Okay, so we are basically setting the speed desired speed as a 1200 rpm and our software will take care of this generated frequency as well as the voltage in such a way that the motor speed limit is basic maximum is a 1200 rpm. Okay. Now let us start. Okay. See, it's a desired rpm, it is a motor speed and basically it's increasing the speed. So once it is a 1200, it will stop increasing the frequency of this device. Okay. So once the speed is maintained, our frequency is again so fixed. Current RPM is 1180. So, it is 
switching between the 1180 to 1200. Okay, so this speed is maintained again. The waveform we can see from the, to the DSO for the channel 1 and 2 is basically an R phase as well as the V phase. Okay, so it's a 120 degree phase shifted and the current frequency is 35 hertz. Okay, so for 35 hertz, our motor speed is maintained with the 1200 RPM. Okay. And we are giving this voltage as well as the current to the DSP gate and we can measure here. See, here what we have done, 1200 RPM, so that is our desired speed. And with the current, after executing the program, it's a fixed switching frequency is a 10 kilohertz and the dead band it's a 4 microsecond. Okay. Now the desired speed is a 1200 RPM. It's a current algorithm, that is a basically current speed of the motor, it's a 1180. Okay, so it's a 1180, so it's basically nearby 1200 RPM. Okay. Again, we can measure the voltage as well as the current that is generated from the inverter. It's measured here. See, the voltage is R 403 volt for the R phase. Y phase as the voltage is 402, and B phase voltage is a 400 volt. As well as the current for each phase, it's a 0.7 ampere. Okay, so right now the current displayed is in a millivolt. So basically, 786 millivolt, 706 millivolt, and it's a 762 millivolt. Okay, so basically it's a current for the R, Y and B phase. Okay.